Has anybody actually played Gollum? The game where you play as a malnourished child because you have no money and nobody likes you and you slave away doing slave labor activities only to be beaten, killed, and then thrown in jail? You know what, actually? Hold on. You know what? This game is actually a fantastic representation of real life. I applaud the developers for making such an accurate description of reality. This is not a bad game. I think people just missed the point. 10 out of 10. No, but in all seriousness, I literally wasted $50 and hours of my time that could have been used for something useful. I could have, I literally could have went out and filled my car with a tank of gas. <laughs> but instead, I, no, instead I bought Gollum Game and trusted a company that price tiered their product meant for AAA. I don't know what I expected, to be honest. I expected at the very least a decent gaming experience, but instead I experienced the most boring and monotonous game I have ever played. Oh my god. <clears throat> this is fun, dude. This is really- this is a fun At game. that point, I decided to look for games that didn't try to pass off as big studios, hence why they put their hefty price tag. That was the last time I ever play a AAA game on release, and I'm gonna call them AAA for the mere fact that they price them so goddamn high, and the company has at least some sort of reputation when it comes to making games. That's what I'm gonna define it as, but these studios aren't really focused on passion anymore, it seems like. It's about releasing something as quick as possible, and cashing out the first couple of days before everyone realizes you release something so horrendous that you have to release an apology on Twitter on how revolting your game is. That's one more added to the collection. Thank you for that. So I refunded the Gollum game and looked through Steam again to see what game I can play and not feel like I've been absolutely robbed to find a game that I would actually enjoy, a game that I can play and feel satisfied when I stop playing it. Unfortunately, I couldn't find anything. So I looked on YouTube to see what the top 10 lists are for every year on Steam, but the problem is I already have all the games they were recommending me. Everything was boring already and everything sucks. I needed something different. So I looked through Steam once again, like how you'd look at the refrigerator every five minutes when you're hungry in hopes that maybe the food you saw there five minutes ago changes into something desirable. Water, my boy. <laughs> Why are you tripping, man? <laughs> And that's when I found it. Ender Lilies, that sounds absolutely atrocious. Pull to the Lamb, I actually played that with one of my friends. It was actually okay. Inscription, I don't even want to play. I saw Markiplier play it. I think I'm good on Darkest that one. Darkest Dungeon to hell no. Finding of Isaac Rebirth is also a nail. I think I'm good on that one. This one looks pretty cool. You guys want to see what it's like to actually enjoy a video game? <laughs> what do you guys think about the timing right now? Maybe if you didn't play after you would actually get above stage three. Oh my, play please someone else, you buffoon. I get to play what I want. I'm good with accurate, I swear. I just can't land his jumps for whatever reason. Oh my god. Mm. Mm hmm I don't know. Yo, what are you- Sailor! My dog's being on the carpet! No! 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 Oh, you can't! Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna flip out if I die here. Oh my god. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's actually fine. That doesn't really matter. I just can't die anymore. This is the run, boys. I can feel it. This is the one. Alright, this one... This one is the run. This one, I promise. Nope, I'm done. Risk of Rain 2. Has anybody not heard about this game? I feel like there's so many videos on it ever since it grew in popularity, yet I feel like a lot of people don't really know about it. You know what it feels like? It sort of feels like a closed off tribe separated from the rest of the world, and the only way you would know about it is if you search up the name on YouTube or you happen to stumble across it on Steam. But once you do, let me tell you. Let me tell you so. Ooh. I jump far now. For anybody that's a little bit confused, the game is a roguelike, a 3D roguelike. Hmm. Oh, that's a little bit unique, is it? You go through different stages. The longer you're in the run, the harder it gets, and the larger variety of enemies there are. The more items you collect, the stronger you are, and the faster you kill things, and in the end, you fight a boss. If you die, it's permanent, and you start over, what? maybe with a different survivor that has different abilities, and there you go. That's it. Pretty generic, run-of-the-mill indie roguelike game, but it's surprising to me why I would make a video specifically about this one. Because not only do I rarely play indie games, I also hate roguelikes. Why? Because there's no actual progression to them. The moment you die, you lose everything you've worked for and the run starts again. You go through the levels, you get unlucky on your weapons or items and die, and the run starts again. You go through the levels and the game crashes because at that point, your poopy computer can't run. God knows what's on your screen anymore. 
and the run starts again. And then you go through the levels, and the run starts again. What? But I still decided to give this game a chance. Not only were the graphics appealing to me, I liked how bright and colorful it looked. And also, I do tend to like third-person shooters a little bit, so that was a plus. And I really didn't want to go back to AAA. It was either this or go back to playing Gollum game, and I didn't want to do that, so yeah, now we're here. <laughs> but out of all the roguelikes that I've played, I can confidently say that Risk of Rain 2 is the only game that I find exceptional when it comes to the roguelike genre. Sure, there are plenty of other roguelikes out there that are cool and nice, and people like them more than this one, and they essentially have the same mechanics, and they have more to do, but to me, this game is different. It doesn't strike at first. Maybe you'll think it's just a simple shooter with silly little monsters and silly characters, but no, no. They aren't characters, they're survivors. You're a rescue team looking for your other comrades that landed on this planet before you. A huge operation led by your one and only captain and you, the commando who came out of retirement. This is who you play when you first open the game. You might be saying, oh, wow, what can he do? What's he about? What are his, is there anything special about, no, no, not really. You have some pea shooters and you can glide and shoot really fast, but only sometimes because it's on a 10 second cooldown and it, for some, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. It does no damage. A simple, ordinary guy, just like me, and maybe just like you. But you can definitely make him not boring. The thing about this game is that the items you collect are almost all passives. Seems a little bit weird, but the cool thing about them is that they are almost infinitely stackable. The game has no limits. The game wants you to break it. You want to scrap all your items into goat hoofs? Go for it. Nobody's stopping you. Do it and run off the map at Mach 5 if you want to. You want to ruin your run by activating the shrine that stacks all your items into one? Go for it. Nobody's stopping you. Or maybe you want to try your luck with this little flower here. It changes all of your items into legendary ones every stage you enter in and by the time you're a couple stages in, you're an invincible sloth. Hold on though, if you're sick and tired of playing RNG with your items. Dude, oh my, this is my third bison steak. No thanks, restart. That's fine. Boom, there you go, no more RNG. You can pick whatever you want now. There we go, <clears throat> much better. Bison steak. But what if you don't want to play commando anymore? That's okay too, you can play as shrek and jump around the map and be a silly little goose or you can play artificer if you're a giant puss you want to play risk of rain 2 but only the first stage play mercenary and if you don't want to play risk of rain 2 at all that's okay there's actually a survivor for that too or maybe even though there are barely any boundaries set maybe you don't even want the boundaries oh my god, oh my god this is a lot what the f Rattling. I have not been able to beat you legitimately. That's okay. I don't care anymore. Wow, that's- oh my god, oh my god. Okay, I don't know what's happening anymore. My game crashed. Okay, let's start over. There's a lot of things about this game that make it great. The fluidity of the game is one of them. If you want to get into a run, it takes about three button clicks to get into one. No loading screens at all, and when you die, you can start up again in two. I think that's something really, really important, especially nowadays. I can't concentrate or have the patience to wait for longer than 10 seconds on something that isn't interesting. Why do you think TikTok is as popular as it is? Very polished, very simple, and very quick. Something that my brain appreciates. I'm getting real tired of losing. I love a game where I can just open it and start playing almost immediately. Not open the game and go through the most annoying and confusing jumbled mess of a UI system to get into the actual thing that I wanted to do. My mind asks for simplicity and for replayability. Risk of Rain gives that to you on a silver platter. On the replayability aspect, there are so many items and so many different item combos you can do in this game that make you want to play the game over and over and over again. Trying to find the perfect run, the perfect ratio of items that allow defense and offense to the point where you actually, you actually don't even need to play the game anymore. It's really weird to say that the longer you play the game, the more relaxed the experience is. It doesn't actually get harder, it actually gets easier. Regardless, obviously, of what you see on the screen. What the fuck is this? The mods are great, thanks to all the wonderful people that also enjoy the game. You can play as Ganondorf, I think that's pretty cool. Ganondorf is cannon. What? I didn't know you can grab balls. Hold up, I have I have an idea. Can I grab you? Um Where'd he go? 
Oh, he's right there. There's a reason why people make modifications for this game. There's a reason why it has overwhelmingly positive reviews. And there's a reason why it's so popular. It's clearly the gameplay, the mechanics, the variety of heroes, the amazing and passionate community that goes along with it. But none of that would be possible if the company that created this game were incompetent. I want you guys to look at Redfall for a second and tell me if this was made with the player base in mind. Right, okay. All right, so clearly not. This is a AAA studio, well known for making games back then with plenty of developers, artists, and enough revenue to make something great. This is Hopu. They've made four games, and three of them are of the same universe. I would say this is surprising, but it really isn't, at least not anymore. But how is it possible that a AAA studio can't make a cohesive, playable, and entertaining game, and an indie company can make a game that is not only functional and doesn't break, but is also so captivating that it creates a community passionate enough to make modifications for it. The biggest compliment you can have in your game, in my opinion. Big studio games nowadays are either a hit or miss. Usually a miss. I wouldn't go as far as to say that the devs aren't passionate. Except for Gollum. That was a that was a terrible concept. Screw everyone that made that game. Alright, so, so for the most part, it's not the developer's fault. It's their poor management. Wanting to push these games out as quick as possible, it seems like. You're my best guy, right? Yeah. And for what? To get your game blown to bits by every media outlet and get overwhelmingly negative reviews on Steam? See, Redfall was actually a cool concept. It wasn't a sequel or a prequel to any other game. It was something completely new with a new story. Yet they somehow still managed to release it too early and left it with tons of bugs and terrible optimization, a big stain on their reputation. Honestly? I, literally, I have no idea why they decided to release it like this and then put an absolutely disgusting, pathetic, insultingly high $70 price tag on it. I could have I, I could have filled my car with two tanks of gas. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing games like these get pumped out so frequently where I can't tell the difference if it was made by an amateur developer who's showing off his first understanding of Unreal Engine 5 or a AAA studio. On the indie side, Risk of Rain 2 is also an original story and it's exactly what a AAA game should be like. I'm not talking about the graphics or the gameplay this time, I'm talking about what comes with that. The obvious work and time they put into it. You can see it in the polish, the variety of survivors, each with a bit of lore to them, the large variety of items and enemies, each with their own unique abilities and logs to further your understanding of what it is you're playing, what it is you're fighting, and what it is you're doing. You become immersed in the game, and that immersion isn't broken by countless bugs. You can tell that there was so much time put into the game and not rushed by some arbitrary deadline. Did I mention the music yet, by the way? Oh my god, the music. This is the only game where I actually put their soundtrack on my Spotify playlist. <laughs> and it only adds more depth and beauty to the game. Sometimes I just want to stay in the stage I'm in and just stand there, listening. If you're a Chris Christondalu music enjoyer, you get a thumbs up from me. Each stage you go into once you've beaten the boss is a new track that gets played, each with its own unique rhythm and each one fitting the environment that you're in somehow. I don't know how they managed to do that, but it works. If it's your first time playing, you have no idea what your objective is. You just move forward, enjoying the run the more you collect items as it gets easier and easier. And as you collect more logs, you find out about who and what you're up against. Mithrix, the king of nothing, imprisoned on the moon by his brother, once friendly to each other, but then Mithrix threw a worm in the well or something, I don't know. But now you have to kill them, but you don't know that yet. You haven't gotten to the final stage because you can't beat it. You keep dying, it's too hard, but you're stubborn and you're narcissistic, so you keep it on Monsoon. And you tell yourself, you got this, and you continue your run again. Stage one, I collect my items and kill the boss in under four minutes. Piece of cake, that was pretty easy. I got this. Stage two, it gets a little harder. I missed a couple chests, but overall, not too bad. Thumbs up, I'm having fun. Stage three, things have changed. I've collected more items. I'm able to run around a little bit more relaxed. Stage four, I can kill anything at this point. Nothing hurts me. Mithrix, I'm coming for that ass. Stage five, I can see the moon. It's huge. I'm almost there. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. Final stage. Can I please not die by some BS? I just want to go to bed at this point. Which pillar is this one again? What does this do again? Oh god. Okay, that's two. Okay, I can die really easily here. I don't have a potion. Alright, that's three right there. Come on! Uh, uh, nope, nope, nope. I can't do this one. Oh! Yes. Once you destroy all the pillars, the music stops. The enemies stop spawning. It's quiet. And then you reach the platform.
<laughs> hey, big boy. Long time no see. Oh my god, chill. Can you stop moving around so fast, please? Stop! Oh my god. Mm, no. <laughs> There's only a few games out there where dying and losing all my stuff after about an hour or two of gameplay doesn't drive me up the wall and cause me to destroy my setup. Risk of Rain 2 is actually one of those games. It's that one game you find where you play it for hours on end and never get bored of it. Even though it's completely repetitive with the same stages, the same items, and the same gameplay, every single run is still a little bit different. You either pick how you want the run to go based off of the items you choose, or you just let the game pick it out for you every single run. Seeing the little logbooks drop after you've killed an enemy and reading the little interesting snippet that comes with it makes it a challenge to piece the lore together. I find that it gives more of an incentive to keep playing. I like it, some people don't, but it's one of the reasons why I love to play it so much. The music, the colorful cartoony graphics, the interesting looking enemies, the mods, the items, the RNG, the replayability, the polish. I don't know. Maybe I'm praising this game too much. I don't really think so. It's a really good game and also a really good game studio. I think I'll just stick with indie games for now. But AAA has disappointed me. I don't see it getting any better anytime soon. Not that there aren't any good recent big titles out there. There definitely are, but it's very few at this point. I think companies are either too impatient or too lazy or don't have enough income to spend years on a game to make it make waves. Unfortunately, it seems like the game world has changed. It was rarely early access. We never had apologies on Twitter. The rushed hot garbage wasn't as common as it is now. Everyone's used to it. And I see the titles that are coming out now that have tons of marketing around it and it looks hype and it looks cool, yeah, but I can't stop myself from thinking that this is just another Redfall. Another Forspoken, another Gollum game. So what's the consensus here? AAA games suck? No. Well, yes, some, some of them do, but it's the company's fault. Please do better. And don't rush your games for the love of God, please. Also, play Risk of Rain 2. Because Risk of Rain 2 is good. Hopu Games, thank you for being the good role model. And hopefully I'll find another game that can make me feel the same way I feel about this one. And if not, that's okay. I'll just keep playing Risk of Rain 2. Holy fuck! Dude. I just finished editing the video. I just finished it. It's nine. Dude, this has taken me over a month to finish because I'm such a giant procrastinator. I'm going to make more of these, probably a little bit more consistently. In the meantime, though, you should follow my Twitch. If I'm not uploading, it's either because I'm editing or I'm streaming to get footage for the video. Please follow. It makes me feel better about myself.